So Cambridge, known for many things, also known for the smallest car parking spaces in the world. Absolutely tiny. Also, everyone's very leisurely here. Um, very different from London. Okay, four pillars that way. And then it drops down there. I am hot and sweaty. It is 33 degrees here in England, so I am sp currently spontaneously combusting. We just got to our hotel, it's really, really, really nice. So I'm gonna give you a tour. So, let's start. This is what we're presented with. Here we have the bathroom. I actually haven't even looked around yet. I wanted to get first impressions whilst on the camcorder. Um, this, is, this is an interesting footwell of a shower, kind of giving you rhino vibes. But um, it's whatever. We also have some L'Occitane, L'Occitane, L'Occitane. I never know how to pronounce this. Everyone has such different ways of pronouncing it. But this lovely flipping brand, absolutely love it. Love it. It's very nice, but it's a very different hotel to ones I've stayed in before. And then should I tell you what's even different? The bath. It's just in the corridor. Oh, we got some little French traditional butter cookies. And what else have we got in here? We've got some teas and all that jazz and private bar. Ooh. Oh, nothing in there. Okay. <laughs> a lovely armchair in case anyone wanted to watch me in the bath. Um, but you know what actually is going to happen? I'll tell you. I'm going to move that armchair right here. I'm going to watch something on Netflix whilst in the bath. This looks like a great tub. This is lovely. What a lovely little space. And it looks out over the greenery of a park, I want to say. Um, we've got some water here. And this bed looks so flipping cozy and inviting and is mahoosive. Oh, that is nice and squished. That, that duvet is lovely. Get a load of that. But we're going to make a plan of action because I'm going to go and explore now. We seem to have encountered an issue. Everywhere that I want to go today is shut. Both galleries I want to go to, shut on Monday, I think. Botanical Gardens, shut. Mathematical Bridge. I'm just giving a spoiler of all the things I'm hopefully going to do tomorrow. So there's lots of things we can't do today. So hopefully within like two minutes, you'll be seeing them. But for me, I'm just going to have to wait till tomorrow. So I'm just going to walk around and see where my feet take me. Let's go and explore Cambridge. Everywhere I looked in Cambridge, felt like I was in a movie set. Honestly, can't imagine how it feels to actually go to Cambridge University. That must be so surreal because you're literally where so many people dream to go and it's just so beautiful, literally everywhere you turn. Also, I love the fact that everyone bikes everywhere. Honestly, the amount of bikes was crazy. Um, also, I love getting lured in by merch from different universities. And then we walked by the Corpus Clock, which is right outside one of the colleges. Um, and this is on the little main bit. It's kind of weirdly freaky, but kind of also love it. I just, I don't know, it made me have many feelings. And then I went to one of the most recommended places to me, which is called Jack's Gelato. And this was an awakening to the world of gelato. As you can see, there was a massive queue, but it was particularly hot this day, so that's probably why. I went for salted Oreo and miso, and I don't know what they do to their gelato. I need to know their secret, but it genuinely was hands down the best gelato I've ever had in my life. Even the miso one, it had that umami. Look how happy I was, just absolutely devouring that gelato. Flipping heck, that's amazing. That's the actual heck. Monday or I think there's graduations going on, I don't really know. 
um, I have found a little alternative and I found an audio guide where you can get a tour um, via your headphones instead of like, because I'm a little bit too shy to do like a walking tour with other people and I just love walking around taking all the sights but I want to know more, I want to know more facts and I found this app where you can download them for different parts of the world and we're going to do one so I'm walking to King's College to start outside the gates. Right, I believe this is where we start and I'm going to get my podcast on. It's not actually a podcast, it's an app. This was one of the best ideas I have ever had and within like the first 30 seconds I stumbled across one of the churches which you can go up and you can actually view the whole of Cambridge which was such a good little spot because it wasn't busy at all. Literally me and I think like five other people max and you just got to look out over the whole of Cambridge and it wasn't too expensive to do either and you got to walk up this really steep church and stairs and it was just really sweet. I learned so much about Cambridge from this app even down to the little apple tree outside which was rumoured to be where Isaac Newton found the laws of gravity and it's where the apple fell on his head but apparently this isn't actually true and eventually they found the real apple tree or something and then they stitched it together not stitched obviously because you cannot stitch an apple tree but they joined the real apple tree with that tree um, but they are just one of the many facts that I learned. Then I walked all along the main stretch and then I got to Castle Hill which has a really good view and again I learned more facts when I was on Castle Hill and then my phone began to die so I had to make the journey home but it was still very fascinating the point that I got to. in the hotel after honestly the loveliest surprise afternoon I did not anticipate whatsoever. It was really one of those moments when you're like huh everything happens for a reason so obviously the galleries were shut, the gardens are shut, everything I wanted to do shut you can forget it and then I just had this I had this thing I saw a group of people that were on a walking tour and I was like I love doing audio guide tours but I don't want to go around with people and obviously there's no way you can just buy a set for an audio guide and I thought as I was listening to a podcast I was like I wonder if there's a podcast one there wasn't I found that app that I told you about and honestly it's been so interesting and it's really nice and you learn something but it also takes you around different places and they have them for so many different locations and I feel like I want to do one for every location I look how many locations they have even different parts of the world. <gasps> Shut up. Oh my gosh, they have one for Port Leven in Cornwall. Let me just tell you, Cornwall, one of my favourite places in the world, and Port Leven is where I used to stay when I was younger. I need to do that. I'm back in the hotel because my phone's nearly dead and I am so hot. It's so hot out there walking around. I've got a real sweat on um, and this room is air conditioned. So I actually think I'm going to order food to my hotel and find somewhere that has really good reviews. Oh, I, hello. I ordered some dinner from this place called, what is it called? Al Chile. I'm not gonna even bother pronouncing that because I know I'm gonna get it wrong and muggly embarrass myself. Um, but this had really good reviews. <laughs> really sorry, we ran out of small pots for one of the salsas. Basically I got a burrito bowl and they have these like varieties of sauces, some salsas um, and apparently they're their house made salsas and they're amazing. So I had to get a trio of salsas, didn't I? I just want to yam it in my mouth. Oh look, so we've got, I think one of these is guacamole and one of these is salad cream. Amazing. Now don't get me wrong, I do like a burrito, I do. But I have said it before, I actually prefer a burrito bowl because I feel like you get more of the flavour. Each mouthful, you can like really get all the punches of the different flavour. Whereas when you put it in a burrito, it kind of is all masked by the tortilla. I think the key to a good burrito bowl is pickled red onion. I really do. I've just poured over the sour cream, but can you look? There's so much happening in here. I love it. I absolutely beasted that. <clears throat> that was de-flipping-licious. And now I'm going to do a salsa taste test, orange rum. 
a brown one and a green one. The trio of salsas. But, who knows? Yeah. Oh, she has a kick. Oh, ha! It's fancy. Good morning, bikini bottom. So I had a good sleep, just had a shower, freshened up. Now I'm getting ready for the day. I am about to go out for some brekkie. And to be honest, there are loads of good breakfast spots here, so it's not hard to pick. Um, but there's literally just one 0 0.2 feet away from my hotel, to be precise. Was it 282 feet? Huh, <laughs> I can't really remember. But anyway, it's not far away from my hotel. So we're gonna go there for breakfast. And then we're just going to carry on with the rest of the day, see where the day takes us. I went to this place called Hot Numbers, which ha was absolutely bustling. There was such a nice atmosphere in there and the service was really, really good. And I literally could have picked so many things on the menu, but I went for the classic buttermilk pancakes, which have this like pistachio mascarpone, this maple pecan brittle thing and some peaches. And it was out of this world. I was apprehensive when I arrived because I thought, is this too fancy and isn't going to taste nice and it's just, you know, looks good, but actually doesn't deliver. But let me tell you, it delivered. That breakfast was so sensational. Honestly, really recommend that place. It has so many good options. Um, and I was dubious because I thought, should I have gone for the bacon pancakes? But these ones lived up to the hype. The pistachio mascarpone. Beautiful. Anyway, now I'm just going to pack up my hotel room. And then I'm going to go and go to the museum. of everything i feel like it's a good place to go and it was free i didn't know it was going to be free um so i'm just sitting and i'm just observing the view it's a really really pretty um yet again everything is so good and beautiful after i went to the gallery i did some more mooching around you know me i just love wandering around and seeing it, everything in action and i also obviously went and got some merch i had to i couldn't not um and i also had a look at the lovely cards and was just in awe of this mug, so I had to buy it, and I also got one in Bath, so now I have a little collection forming of this style of mug in every place that I go to. <laughs> I then journeyed to Kettle's Yard, which is something that you have to pay for. This is a bit of a gem in Cambridge. This was the house to Jim and Helen Ede. Jim was actually a curator at the Tate Gallery in London and was friends with loads of artists because of this, like Barbara Hepworth, Henry Moore, and Alfred Wallace, to name a few. And all of their art lived in his house. Not all of it, obviously, but lots of their pieces lived in his house. And Jim would hold an open house every afternoon of the university term and would show students around the house, then donated the house and all of its contents to the University of Cambridge under the condition that nothing should move around and everything should stay in the house as it is um, with no labels. So you get an insight into their home, but this lovely artwork as well. It was really, really fantastic. And I would love, to have seen him and Helen living there and the fun exciting people that visited and what went on there and um, it was just such a lovely lovely little space and they've also extended it and now I've got Kettle's Yard Gallery which I also looked around. Then after that I was a little bit peckish so I decided to go and get some lunch from a highly raved about location called Bread and Meat which you guessed it they do bread and meat so I got a little sandwich and some poutine. I think it's called poutine I don't know, I can't pronounce that right, um, but you'll see how delicious it was in a minute. But it's quite funny because I got it to go and it's just down this random little alleyway next to the restaurant and you have to press the doorbell to get it. But I eventually got it and I was in for a treat. Okay, I'm back in the car and I've got to do a little haul. So I went to Bread and Meat, which has been recommended so much. They do amazing sandwiches. So this is the sandwich. They have all sorts of options, but they also do poutine. 
poutine, poutine, I don't know. Um, this is basically a Canadian dish, <laughs> which is cheese curds and gravy and chips, and I've always wanted to try it. And I've never found anywhere that's done it before. Oh my word, come and have a look. Okay, it doesn't look amazing, <laughs> but it's cheese and gravy on chips. What more could you want? I love gravy so much. I just think it elevates everything. This is amazing. This is better than I thought. I need to try proper Canadian poutine now. Oh my god. That gravy. Mm. I was about to say sweet mother of pearl. What are they putting in this? But it's literally gravy, cheese and chips. And that is... Oh my god. I think this is my new favourite food. If you live in Cambridge, you are lucky lucky people. I feel like bread and meat would do so well in London. Mm. So have our little steak sandwich. Dip it in the gravy. Phenomenal. I then just had a moment with my sandwich and my chips and it was so good. Anyway, thanks for watching another episode of 24 Hours In. I'm actually going to be posting them on here on Extra Grack. And I always post at 5pm. Um, and I hope you enjoy. We've got another instalment coming soon. So stay tuned, my little people. Subscribe if you want to uh, not miss it, I guess.